Hey everyone, the topic of this video is while loops. Our first example asks us to write a program which takes user input as strings until the user input's done and we want to store all the strings in a list and print the list out. So let's first just make a list. Then let's get that user input. So maybe please enter a string and then we want that while loop. So we'll use the while keyword. And now we need to figure out our condition. So typically you'll see language in the problem like until the user does something or until this condition happens. And we have that here. So until the user input's done, we'll take user input as strings. So our condition is while user input doesn't equal done we will append to the string list string list dot append user input and then we actually want to take user input again so we can copy this entire line really think about why this makes sense because this might be a little weird at first we want to get one user input to at least get the while loop going right if we didn't have this second line then user input would be undefined so we need it at least once to get the loop going and then for it to continue it will use this user input from the inside finally we just need to print string list and indent that correctly okay and then if we run this code, let's enter A, B, C, D, and then done. And we get that list. Now this next problem will show us while loops a little differently, but with the same ideas. So it says to finish the block of code below. How does this differ from the first example? So let's first make sure we understand what's going on here. So it looks like this program is well documented and it says it's summing up every number until the user inputs until they enter 999. So we have a list and we're adding to the list like we were last time until the user inputs 999, but we have a different structured while loop here. So it says while true. Now this is slightly dangerous because we can have infinite while loops that never end which can you know crash your computer, crash the program. But in this case, it's okay because we have an end condition here and that's this if statement. So while true will always run and then we're taking user input, but if the user inputted number was 999, then we use the break statement to completely stop the loop. However, if the user didn't enter 999, will append the number to the list. So it looks like the code we need to implement is to sum up all the numbers in the list. So we might need a counter variable, such as counter equals zero, because we want to keep track of how many items are in the list and where we're at traversing through the list. So we might say while counter is less than the size of the nums list. So I use the len function there. So if we had a list maybe with one, two, and three in it, that's size three or len three equals three there. And we have a counter variable. So we're at index zero, for instance. And then we wanna increment and make sure that we're now at index one. So then we can say num sum plus equals the list at the index counter, like we were just saying, and then we'll increment this counter variable. And this is a somewhat common pattern that you see with while loops. And the sum is printed out, so we're good on that front. Let's run this code. Let's enter one, two, and three, and then 999 to stop. And we get six, which is one plus two plus three, so that worked. Now this differed from the first example in our while structure. So in this first example, we did have a defined condition to end the while loop in. That was if user input didn't equal done. 
In the second example, we have while true, which saved us an input statement, but meant that we had to use a while true. And it's not the end of the world if we use these, but sometimes it's more meaningful to have an actual condition instead of just saying while true, and then somewhere in the code we break. However, it is an option, and it's a good use of break. All right, so example three asks, does this program ever end? Well, let's see, we have a list of expenses which are floats by the looks of it. And while the size of the expenses list is greater than zero, we print the first element and we remove the first element. So if I had to guess, I would say that this program does end because in the first iteration, we print out 7.89 and then we remove it and all of the indices shift left one. So now 15.34 is at index zero, 35.34 is at index one, and so forth. So let's run this code and see what happens. That worked, so it did end, and it did print out all five of these values. All we're doing here is we're getting from the list and we're removing from the list. And this isn't required for the course, but there is a method called pop, which will do this for us. But more importantly, the while loop here, again, has a defined Boolean condition, and we can check the size of the expenses list, for instance, and we can also remove from the list. However, it is sometimes difficult to remove from a list while you're iterating over the list. So be careful if you're doing that, because sometimes indices and elements that you're searching for change locations. All right, that's it for while loops. We'll see you next week.